Have the latest iPhone? Yes, we have the iPhone 14, the 14 Max, the 14 Pro, the 14 Pro Max. We also have different storage variants. We have the 128 GB, the 256 GB, the 512 GB, and the 1 TB. And we also have two new variants now, which is the eSIM only variant and the physical SIM variant as well. Just give me the Geo phone next. Oh, the Geo phone, you have to pay the you know starting installment of 2,000 rupees. No, God, please, no, no. And apart from that, you also have I'll just be right back. I'll just. Okay. That's right, Apple is expected to launch as many as 8 iPhone 14 models this year and don't forget the storage queues that go along with it. Welcome back guys, I'm Ashad. you're watching yet another episode of Retech where we're going to be talking about the most important tech news of this week along with some silly ones and make some dad jokes along the way. Let's go! All right, so the news actually states that the iPhone 14 is expected to now come in an eSIM only variant. Of course, you have the physical SIM variant, which also accepts a second eSIM, but you know, Apple is going towards that portless future. And therefore, this is closer to the reality of that eSIM only iPhone that Apple wants to make in the near future. Now, the question definitely on everybody's minds would be, how does that translate for India? Well, you can actually get an eSIM connection on your current iPhones on an Airtel, Vodafone idea or Geo connection. But what is important to note is that these telecom operators will have to educate their, you know, users about how to get eSIM on their, you know, devices. You know, I've actually tried this in the past where I wanted to change my eSIM connection from a phone to a Samsung Galaxy watch that I was using and it was so difficult. I had to literally sit on a 30 minute call with an Airtel exec to actually go through the whole process. So yeah, it can get cumbersome. So we'll have to wait and watch if Apple actually implements that in India, but world over definitely in the US. US, I'm pretty certain that the eSIM only variant could take off if people are interested. Okay, now moving on from Apple to the real MVP of launching many phones, Redmi. So essentially, Xiaomi's Redmi sub-brand launched as many as four Redmi Note 11 phones this week, which includes the Redmi Note 11, the Redmi Note 11 S, the Note 11 Pro 4G, and the Redmi Note 11 Pro 5G, of which the Redmi Note 11 S is confirmed to launch in India on February 9th, and the Note 11 might also come along with it on the basis of the teaser that Xiaomi has put up on Twitter. Now, both the Note 11 and the Note Note 11s come with a punch hole AMOLED 90 hertz display but more importantly the USB of the Note 11s is that it comes with a 108 megapixel camera for the first time on a non pro variant of a Redmi Note number series phone now moving on to the Redmi Note 11 Pro and the Note 11 Pro 5G the main difference between those two phones is the fact that the you know 4G variant of the phone comes with Helio G96 whereas the 5G variant comes with Snapdragon 695 both these phones also come with a 120 hertz AMOLED panel and more importantly the Redmi Note 11 Pro 5G comes with a 108 megapixel camera. Also, the Redmi Note 11 Pro 4G comes with a 108 megapixel camera. Now, my question here is, I don't know what happened to the Redmi Note 11 Pro Max. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section below. Now, moving on to the third news of the day, and this is a very important one because it was too premature of me to think that, you know, Intel was beaten handily by Apple's M1 Max. But like a battered Rocky Balboa, Intel has managed to fight back to a certain degree. The news is that the latest Intel Core i9 Alder Lake processor has managed to beat the Apple M1 Max in early Geekbench testing. It is a whopping 4% faster now. But here's the catch. The new Core i9 12900HK draws a lot of power. In a CPU-only Cinebench R23 benchmark, the MSI GE76 Raider, which houses this new Intel chip, was connected to a wall socket and it drew anywhere between 100 watt and 140 watt power. In comparison, the MacBook M1 Max draws only 40 watt power. Now, it is this performance to power ratio that Apple has absolutely nailed and you get better battery life as well. Having said that, I'm still pretty happy that Intel is trying very hard and maybe it will become better with power efficiency in future upgrades. Now moving on to this week's WTF headline of the week, Narcos meets Black Mirror. Apparently the Mexican drug cartel is actually using GTA Online to recruit gamers to transport drugs. In short, to make them drug mules. Reportedly the Customs and Borders official in Arizona were inspecting a Jeep Cherokee and they found 60 kilograms of meth inside the fuel tank. So the driver was actually promised $2,000 for transporting some electronic equipment from uh, you know, Mexico to US and that's when she was caught. 
For the Indians in the audience, this could probably be the script for Pushpa 2. Also, please note that you should always be careful when you are playing games online and stay safe. This could happen in any game. It could happen in BGMI or Free Fire or even PUBG. So, you know, you have to stay safe. Now, I know that the Geophone Next has met with a lot of criticism. You should definitely go and check out our video as well on the phone. But the Geophone 5G seems to be more in line with a modern day Android smartphone. An Android Central exclusive report claims that the Geophone 5G will come with a Snapdragon 480 chip inside and will be available in a 4GB, 32GB storage variant as well. Apart from that, you also will get a 6.5 inch IPS HD plus LCD panel, 5000mAh battery with 18 watt charging speeds. Hopefully, if everything pans out well, we will see Geo's 5G network rollout happening by the end of the year and maybe even the launch of the Geophone 5G to go along with it. Now, this is one news that took me by surprise. Apparently, this OnePlus 10 Ultra will come with Oppo's homegrown Mary Silicon SoC. Also, there's a lot of resource sharing happening with the hardware and also some of the partnerships. Yes, an Oppo Find X5 is also expected to come with Hasselblad partnership. So yeah, what do you guys think of this bit of information? Are you excited for a Find X5 with Hasselblad or are you more excited for a OnePlus phone with an Oppo chipset? Let me know in the comment section below. Now let's react to one piece of news that I found very interesting. Apparently most OTT subscribers in India are finding it frustrating to find something to watch. More than half the respondents in an Accenture survey said that it takes them more than six minutes to find something to watch. That's like the two minute Maggie noodle theory. You can never make anything in two minutes and you can never find something to watch in six minutes. Trust me, when my wife and sit to find something to watch on Netflix, it generally takes us 30 minutes and then we go to sleep. So that's it for this week's episode of Retech. See you guys in the next one. Until then, keep tracking and stay safe.